What up, SPF? I'm Jack Lynch. And I'm Peter Yaram. And this is your October monthly edition of Raider News. Let's check out what we have in store today. Every fall, SPF students go on their annual Student Leadership Conference, or SLC for short. Let's take a look to see how it went. SLC is every October. Uh, this was our 25th SLC this year. SLC was a 36-hour event from Friday to Saturday night, say over one night. It was uh, around Al Alamusha State Park, which is like northwest New Jersey, and we did a lot of team building stuff, um, a lot of fun activities. Uh, like we broke into different groups and kind of talked about different topics and worked on certain projects, like building a tower with newspaper and we like we had a canoe race in the lake took a hike up to a mountain um, so it was, a, it was a fun weekend oh I think there, there's so many good aspects but I would say my favorite thing is to bring generally between 30 to 60 kids that don't know each other and in the beginning on Friday watch them nervously you know skill build and do team building and and that's amazing and then on Saturday night when we leave, it's, it's, a, it's a huge happy family, especially this year. I'm going to miss the people and just the camaraderie that was gained through that weekend and kind of like being in your own world. I mean, there was no cell phone service, so you were really like in your own world with just a few select people from the school. And I'm going to miss the camaraderie and um, kind of like the leadership, like kind of bazing moments that you, that you gained. I would say, well... There is always a story. Every year there's a moment that, that makes you emotional or makes you cry, in my case. Um, I would say we've had some amazing, SL, amazing things come out of SLC, like SMAC and various community projects. Uh, two years ago, I thought we, uh, we did a great job collecting um, clothing for Sandy victims and donating it, donating them to the um, local homeless shelter in Newark. Thought that was an amazing moment. Uh, we also had a mom suffer from AF ALS, and we did a uh, food, not a food, a clothing donation for her, and donated over a thousand dollars in her name. I would, say, I would say, if you get the chance and you get selected, do it. It's kind of annoying at first. You know, there's a meeting, there's forms. You're away, you know, you're away for a night in the wilderness. But just give it your all, kind of like let your guard down a little bit, immerse yourself in the moment, and do it. Every fall, SPF inducts new members into the National Honor Society. To find out more, here's my handsome colleague, Bobby Nugent. We would like to welcome you to the induction ceremony for 2016 and 17. Um, how's it going? I'm fine. How are you? Doing good, thanks. So, uh, how do you think the ceremony went tonight? I think it went really well. Um, we have a great group of kids, uh, both new inductees and former, or actually current, uh, members from last year that really, uh, we all came together to make this a really great event for our new inductees. Don't just be something. Do something. So how does it feel to be able to come back and share your message with kids that started out just like you? Uh, coming back to Scotch Plains in particular is, is huge because this is, this is home, this is what taught me uh, to sort of be an active citizen, to be an active participant in the world and uh, I've kept so much of that with me and I, I've brought it with me. So to be able to impart even a little bit is enormously rewarding. Everyone is uh, dressed to the nines tonight. Who would you say is best dressed? I mean, besides myself, obviously, I'd have to say Dr. Heisey, of course. You know, he's, al he's always looking good out here, of course. Very nice. Thank you very much, Max. Thank you, Bobby. Much like my hair, Dablina M's ACT score was perfect. Let's go to Student of the Month and find out what she has to say. Hi, I'm Stephanie Judge, and I'm here with the October edition of Student of the Month, Deblina Mukherjee. Hi, Deb. Hi, Steph. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So I'm here to interview you about you and your ACT score. So we all know that you have a perfect ACT score. Um, 
How'd you do it? Um, well, I studied really hard. Um, yeah. How long did you study for? Like per day, per week? I spent, I think, like an hour to an hour and a half a day. Um, basically, what I did was I went online and they have like a bank of all the old tests and I printed all of them out and I did all of them Every over the summer. Week. Yeah. Over the summer? Yeah. So it, it took so me what like. What did you do in the summer? Like just. ABC just that. Work? Yeah. I went to Juice House. <laughs> okay. Um, that's wow. That's a lot of dedication. No wonder you have a perfect score. Um, how many times have you taken the ACT before that? I took it once. Just that one time. Did you also get a perfect score? Just that one. Oh, just kidding. Yeah. You said it just that one time. Oh my God. That's crazy. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you are also a part of Model UN. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. We're really excited. We're having our conference um, in Hershey this year, and we our advisors are now uh, Miss Wagner and Miss Sassman, and I'm really excited about that. I love them a lot. Um, and we have like a good group. I think it's a good delegation. We've gotten our stuff in on time, and um, we're looking forward to a great conference. Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing about it. Um, so what, do you do any other clubs? Or yeah, activities. of course. I'm like pretty active in youth in government, which is one of my like favorite clubs now. Um, it's kind of like it's run by the same program as Model UN, but um, it focuses on like New Jersey issues specifically, as opposed to like global issues. And it's um, kind of a smaller group, um, and I I like that a lot. Um, I think that's it. That's exciting. So you're a big, um, you're very interested in government. Yeah, nice. love is the that government. What you want to go to college for? Um, I was thinking about it. I was somewhere in between like politics, philosophy, statistics, economics, those kinds of, you know. Speaking of colleges, uh, what, colleges are you <laughs> what colleges are you looking at? <laughs> Trigger warning. Um, I just did early decision to UChicago, so let's see how that oh. pans out. Um, other than that, I'm looking at a lot of like small liberal arts colleges on the East Coast, so like Amherst. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We must be very close. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a weak one. So Amherst, Wellesley, Swarthmore, um, things like that. I really like the University of Rochester when I visited it, um, and the University of Pittsburgh. Nice. Well. Oh yeah. my gosh, it's so exciting. Well, I'm a little biased, but I, I kind of really hope that um, you pick Amherst. But <laughs> um, that's all I have for today. And I just want to congratulate you on all your hard work. And I know you're going to get into wherever you want to get into, Chicago, Amherst, anywhere. <laughs> Thanks, Steph. Now back to Jack and Peter. Let's take a look at October's Teacher of the Month. Yeah, what's up, Raff? Rob Rafferty. All right, so I'm here with uh, Robert Rafferty, and uh, congratulations, you're Teacher of the Month. How do you feel about it? Oh, it's a great honor. I appreciate it. All right. The reason you're selected for Teacher of the Month is because of the uh, Raider News coverage on uh, Advanced Gym. Uh, can you tell us about it? Uh, Advanced Gym, also known as, uh, most kids know it as uh, AP Physical Education, was implemented by uh, Mr. Kane, our lead teacher, as a way of uh, engaging more students, a uh, higher level of critical thinking in terms of some of the activities and sports that we play. All right, that's cool. And so, uh, obviously, you're a gym teacher here. Uh, where did you go to college? And if you got a graduate degree or anything else, where did you go and what did you get? Uh, I graduated from Keene State uh, College up in New Hampshire with a Bachelor's of Science, and I have two master's degrees, one in physical education and one in education administration. Very, very nice. So, uh, where did you grow up? Uh, Long Island. And what part of Long Island? Uh, North Shore, about uh, Wisconsin, Smithtown area. So, Smithtown East, Smithtown West? I went stuff. to Smithtown East one year, and then we had a new high school, Smithtown. Wow, that's very interesting. You hear that? So, uh, like I said, we got Rob here, Teacher of the Month. Thank you for coming out with us. Appreciate it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many moles are in this water bottle? Mr. Abadir does. Let's go find out what he has to say on Mole Day. All right, so I'm here with Mr. Abadir on Mole Day. And Mr. Abadir, what is Mole Day? Mole Day is a celebration of the mole, which is a chemistry number, really, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, just like a dozen is 12. A mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power, which is why we celebrate Mole Day on 10:23, which is October 23rd. Awesome. So what did you guys do today? Today we had a special celebration. We had a lot of pre-Mole Day preparations, so all my students made these really cool t-shirts uh, using permanent markers and ethanol, which you can actually do at home if you like. And uh, 
after we did that, we uh, wore them on mold day, and then everyone had to carry around a bottle of, or just any plastic container of as much or as little water as they wanted. They had to bring it to all their classes. Their teachers signed that they brought their bottle to class. Some uh, staff members had a chance to guess how many moles of water were in the containers. And next week, we're going to give out the special mold day pencil prizes to all the winners, as well as students also guessed how many moles were in uh, the bottles. With many SPS students voting for the first time in this year's presidential election, let's take a look at who students think are the best candidates for the job. I wrote about that in... You called it the gold I standard. About, well, I hope... You called I, it the gold... When it was negotiated, not, which I, I wrote about that... So is it President Obama's fault? Is it President Obama's you fault? even announced. Look, there Secretary, are Secretary, is it President there, Obama's fault? But you have but no plan. Educate... Oh, I do. Secretary, fact, you I have no plan. a book about it. So what do you think, Hillary or Donald Trump? I don't like either. Tell me why. Um, Hillary's a criminal and Trump's a racist. That's a very good point. So what do you think, Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton? I don't really have a preference. Is there a reason why? They're both idiots. That's a good point. Matt, are you voting this election? Unfortunately. So what are your opinions on both of the candidates and you know how they're presenting themselves? Um, I do think Tom Donald Trump is a great candidate. I think he's doing good, but you know, I'm gonna go for my girl Hillary because women are about to rule the world. Hillary 2016 all the way. Thank women, y'all going places. Are you voting this election? I am. Uh, now, what are your opinions on the candidates and this election so far? Um, I personally don't agree with Trump, and I feel like Hillary's ideas are more realistic and believable. Thanks. Right. Now, Margo, what do you think of the candidates and how they're presenting themselves? I think that the candidates are not very strong this year. I think that they're in for it for more popular votes than actually being political and trying to win America over their actual reasonings, um, how they're going to make America better, than just saying, then they're just saying that like it's more popular, I guess. And yeah. Thanks. Now, Riley, are you voting this election? I am. Uh, what are your opinions on both candidates and how they're presenting themselves? I think Hillary should be in prison and Donald Trump should be president. USA. <laughs> Thank you. Now to look at the past with Matt Farina. 2016 has been quite an interesting year so far. I run around the school asking kids what they think about it. <laughs> Hello, I'm Matthew Farino. For Raider News, I'm here with Elliot Sales. So, uh, Elliot, what is the biggest problem of 2016? Um, this election. I fucking... What? What is the... Everybody says that, man. Everybody says that. What is, uh... What was the biggest problem of 2015? Uh, also this election. Okay, thank you. Alright, uh, let's go. Let's go. All right, I'm uh, I'm I'm here. I'm Matthew Frino for uh, Raider News. I'm here with Bupinder Sohal. So, uh, Bupinder, what do you think the biggest issue of 2016 is? Everything. All right, what do you think the biggest issue of 2015 was? I have no idea. Scabba da doop doom doop doop da. Matthew, can I go home now? No, you can't go home. All right, I'm Matthew Frino, reporting for uh, Raider News. I'm here with uh, Michael Giuliani. So, Michael, what is the biggest problem of 2016? Probably people stopping people for interviews. Well, that's how kids today feel about 2016. But how did kids feel 20 years ago? Let's take a look at this blast from the past. Hi, I'm Amy Borey here, reporting for 34 News, and I'm here with. Dina Kleinroth and Jamie Cantal, and I'm asking them what they think the biggest issue of 1991 was. Dina, what do you think the biggest issue of 1991 was? Well, I think that the biggest issue is the recession that we're in right now and a lot of unemployment. Okay, thanks. And Jamie, what do you think the biggest issue was? Um, facing the world, I would say definitely the war in the Persian Gulf. Okay, thanks. Rachel Evans and Rashida Rowling. And what do you think the biggest issue of 1991 was? The war. And what else? 
we'll win the championship. Okay, and what do you think the biggest issue of 1991 was? I think it was the misuse of the country's armed forces in the Persian Gulf War, just typical of our country's imperialistic policies at all times. Okay, thank you. And now back to the studio. Now let's go over to Christy with Arts and Entertainment. Thanks, Peter. Let's go over to October's Featured Artist of the Month, Rachel Graham. Welcome to Artist of the Month. I'm Ethan Staple and I'm joined here with Rachel Graham. How are you doing, Rachel? I'm good. How are you? So you did something very special uh, over this uh, past October. Uh, you did The Wizard of Oz, right? Yeah. Um, I choreograph uh, the show every year for Theater to All, which is a nonprofit organization. Um, it was started by an alumni of Scotch Pinsfield High School, Lena Zickas. She graduated a few years ago and she started it to raise money for um, a charity that's through St. Bartholomew's uh, Charity Starts at Home. So uh, I started choreographing three years ago, my freshman year, um, and each year we raise a significant amount of money for this charity. Is it the same cast every year, like people come back always, or is there always new people? Uh, there's some people who have stayed like um, consistent throughout the years, and then sometimes people will come um, like new people and then maybe they leave and other people leave but we always have a really good cast of kids. Alright, um, so there was other people in the show, uh, I remember James Hahn was in it and mm -hmm. didn't Nicole Denker do something in it as well? Yeah, Nicole Denker was the music director, Amelia Graham was the director and um, from Cranford High School, Katrina was chosen was the assistant director. Alrighty. You also have been dancing for a number of years, how many years has it been uh, since you started dancing? Thirteen. Wow. Uh, what's your most memorable performance? Oh, um, I don't really have a memorable performance. I mean, we compete a lot, so I, I do perform a lot. There's four competitions every year, and there are recitals. Um, I definitely remember like recitals, how they're very tiring, because as one of the older teams, we have to um, repeat dances, so we dance a lot more. Um, but it's always been really fun. Do you want to do a dance when you get older as like a profession? Um, I may minor in dance, but no, I'm not leaning towards that direction. All right. Well, thank you for being here, Rachel. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Back to you guys in the studio. The Music Boosters held their annual pasta night. Let's check out some highlights from this event. We will put the long song on the shelf.
The Spiffy High Choir took a trip to Broadway to see Fiddler on the Roof. Let's see how it went. Recently, the SPF Choir went on a trip to Broadway. What did they see? Fiddler on the Roof. Let's see what they have to say. I'm here with the one Connor Flood. Connor, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good. What did you think of Fiddler? Um, I thought Fiddler was really impressive overall. Um, just the culture was really represented really well by the actors and everything. Um, the music was amazing. The dancing was just as great. Uh, what was your favorite song? Um, I would have to say, I'm not sure if this is the right name of the song, but Sunrise, Sunset. Yeah, that's the right song. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's probably the most beautiful song in the entire show. All right, thank you. And now we're here with uh, Catherine Collagian. Catherine, what was your favorite part of the show? Um, my favorite part of the show, I don't know. I really liked all of it. I liked all of the dancing. Um, all the big group numbers were really funny. Um, and I really liked the matchmaker scene when the sisters were singing together. What, do you, what was your favorite part of the show, Nate? Oh, uh, definitely the bottle dance. That was incredible. That was really cool. Cut to the bottle dance. And finally, we go to uh, Sam Shetlick. Sam, what was your favorite part of the show? Nate kind of stole my thunder. Mine was also the bottle dance. I thought it was really impressive how they just slid across the stage. Yeah, I, no, I completely cool. agree. I completely agree. Yeah. But like, like Catherine's this. talking. Like <laughs> well, you've heard it here, folks. This is what the SPF Choir thought of Fiddler on the Roof. Personally, I thought it was great. Back to you in the studio, guys. Now let's go over to Catherine for the Pulse. Thanks, Christy. This month, DECA held their first inaugural Raider Run to benefit Marfan Syndrome. Let's check out some footage from the event. I was diagnosed when I was eight years old. Um, Marfan syndrome is a connective tissue disorder, so me personally, it affects my um, aorta, my cardiovascular system, my skeletal system, my scoliosis. Um, it's been something I've had to adapt to my whole life, but you make do. Um, I used to be a little like shy talking about it. Now it's just just part of who I am. It's helped shape me. So. And, and after all this preparation, how do you think the event turned out? Um, you know, you can't control the weather, but I think everybody had a really good time. Um, we were able to raise a good amount of money through the Marfan Foundation. We don't know where we are with that yet. We'll know at the end of the day. Um, and the most important thing, I think people had fun. Um, it's important that when you do something like this, that people are engaged and involved. And I think this might become an annual event. Great. Even though we had rain this morning, we've pushed through and we still held the event and everyone's getting colored as you see with me. I'm still getting colored on even if I'm throwing it. So everyone's having a great time and we love having them here. Awesome. All right. Thank you. There are many diseases in this world that people just don't know about. And because we don't know and it doesn't get that kind of publicity and press, um, they go by the wayside. This is one of those diseases where there is real, there's no cure. and to do diagnose it is an expensive and long process and they need research and you know, figure ways to help identify people with it and help find a cure. Exactly. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. This year, Raider News decided to answer an important question. Should the toilet paper face the front or the back? I'm Sean Murray. And I'm Sebastian Chinchilla. We're here to find out the age-old question. Does the toilet paper go over? We're under. So we're here with senior Mike Slary. Mike Slary, what, how do you use your toilet paper? Over or under? I use my toilet paper over. We're here with senior Pasquale Mariano. I so, do. Paki, how do you prefer your toilet paper? Over or under? That's a very difficult question, Sebastian. And, um, you know what? Um, as long as it gets the job done, I don't really care. Chris, do you prefer to have your toilet paper over or under? What was that? I prefer over. Why's that? It looks nicer. You like scootering, Chris? No. <laughs> A toilet paper over or under? Uh, whatever 
same way, like, if you're sitting on the toilet, whatever faces like the toilet should be over like this. And just... Perfect answer. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, we're here with uh, sophomore Michael Ferrara, and I'm here to ask you the age-old question. Do you prefer toilet paper over or under? Uh, I prefer under. Okay, there we go. Okay, aquí estamos con la profesora, uh, señora Ferrante, ¿cómo está? Hola, bien, gracias, ¿cómo está? Señora, ¿cómo prefieres usar tu papel higiénico? Uh, ¿Encima de o debajo? No me importa. Gracias. We're here with senior Ryan Chan. One question, over or under? Over. There you go, kid. Now let's go over to Colin and Peter for the top 10 plays. Coming in at number 10, Murphy coming down the pitch. Shoots on goal, deflected. Patrick Elman with the finish. At number nine, we got some Raiders football highlights. Cooper Heisey rolls out of the pocket towards the sideline. Lofts one up. Dwight Lawler with the catch through three defenders in for the TD. At the number eight spot, we have Max Moore playing it to Robbie Viglione. Makes a turn, cuts, puts one up right in the back of the net. That's how we do it. At number seven, back to some Raiders football. Cooper Heisey drops back. Lofts one up. Dwight Lawler. Again, lays out full extension for the touchdown. Number six, I'm gonna just let the feet do the talking here. Patrick Elman with the strike. Number five, Alex Osislo takes a handoff. He gone 50, 40, 30, defender in sight. Nope, slip and fall. Touchdown, baby. That's how we do it here. Coming in at the number four spot, some more football. Ball snapped. Cooper Heisey plays to Isaiah Stewart with the catch. Deke, see ya. Runs it in for the touchdown. At number three, Sophie Browse juking out the Westfield girls soccer player. Puts her on her butt. Sends one over the keeper's head that ties up the game quite a strike coming in at number two they just they say it best i'm just gonna let the feet talk once more boom john murphy with the strike and a cartwheel that's that's a class celly right there and at number one raiders girls soccer union county final sophie browse plays it up top christina rogers heads it in for the title that's seven in a row. Quite the dynasty going on here. Quite the dynasty. It's lit. It's always lit. Look at the girls go wild. Those are your top 10 plays. This month, SBF celebrated Halloween. Let's check out some costumes. I'm Cooper. And I'm Pete. And I'm Matt. Welcome to Scotch Plains Halloween Festival. And uh, we're going to be touring around the school, seeing why people chose to uh, dress up with what they are for Halloween. Let's go. Hi, I'm here with Senior Summer Shepherd. What are you for Halloween? I'm LeBron James. I am the GOAT. All right, I'm here with security guard, Mr. Alman. And uh, why do you dress up as a security guard today? I think it's, you know, just a great costume. Obviously, I'm not really security. So I think this works out, you know. It gives people the false illusion of uh, safety. It's very threatening, right? Very threatening, you know. Anything could happen here at any time. And uh, people think I can do something, but I can't. I can't. So it's great. I'm here with uh, Mr. Moscow. So, Mr. Moscow, what are you for Halloween? I am uh, Dustin from the show Stranger Things. Uh, like the costume, very creative. Thank you. I'm here with Justin Chalet, and uh, what inspired your costume today? My friends, they uh, they pressured me into doing this. It was great. Uh, I had another costume in mind. We went to Party City. It didn't fit, so now I'm this. Uh, what would you consider yourself right now? Um, I really don't know. I'm, I'm a disappointment to everyone. Could you like, give us a little spin? Uh, what? Spin around. Give us a spin. Hi, I'm here with uh, Mr. Fabiano. Mr. Fabiano, uh, what are you dressed up for this Halloween? I'm a 1970s Raider wrestler. Very nice costume and very authentic too. Like that a lot. 
Thank you. It's it's the real real singlet from the 1970s. Uh, every season, our wrestlers uh, put on these singlets for our alumni match. Um, so come out and support the wrestling team. Will do. Thank you very much. Happy Halloween. I'm here with Dr. Heisey. Uh, Dr. Heisey, why are you dressed as the school principal today? Uh, I couldn't think of anything else. Hi, I'm here with... Sandy Ann. And Sandy Ann, what are you dressed up as for Halloween? Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Oh, very nice costume. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm here with Esty Butler and Esty, uh, what is your costume? Uh, I'm an Eskimo. It's cold out. I'm here with Tim Lamberta. Uh, what is your costume today? I'm a uh, tennis player. What, can, uh, what inspired you to be this uh, costume? Well, I thought I had the hair for it and uh, I just needed the shorts. I agree, thank you. I'm here with Senora Kudron. And Senora Kudron, what are you dressed up for this Halloween? I am dressed up as Smarty Pants. It's a homemade costume. Very nice costume. I like the creativity. Thank you very much. All right. I'm here with uh, the science department teachers, and every year they always uh, dress up as a theme. So, what was this year's theme? So, this year we dressed up as members of the peri elements from the periodic table. And so, everybody's an element and everybody has dressed up in their own interpretation of that element. Uh, very nice. What are some examples that we have? Calcium and the skeleton. Uh -oh. Element silver for metal. I am plutonium, so I'm Doc from Back to the Future. Very creative. I'm thorium as Thor. I'm a Statue of Liberty because it's made up of copper. Energizer bunny, lithium batteries. Uh -oh. I like that one. I'm, a, I'm fluorine, so I am the actual tooth fairy. Uh -oh. Very nice. So, Mr. Quackenbush, what's your element and what's your costume? My element is potassium, and my costume is a banana. And uh, the correlation is that there's a lot of potassium in bananas, correct? Correct. All right, thank you. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Hi, I'm here with Isabel Zakaria and Christy Serini. And what are you guys for Halloween this year? Uh, we and the rest of the Scotch Plain Sandwich Gymnastics oh, team are lifeguards. And uh, was that anyone's idea? or? Um, I think it was Kira Farley's idea. Well, that was a great idea. Happy Halloween. Hi, I'm here with... Emma. And Emma, what are you for Halloween this year? Uh, I'm not really anything. I just like to <laughs> put something spooky on my face and then try not to give anyone a heart attack. Yeah, well, you certainly scared me when I first saw you. Now let's go back to Peter and Jack. This has been your October edition of Raider News. Stay sweet.